I have avocado anxiety. That's the headline right there. Millennial claims to develop anxiety from avocados. But I'm serious. The, the window of time in which an avocado is at peak ripeness is like 18 hours at most. Under ripe and it's like you're eating chalk. Too ripe and by the time you've gotten rid of all the brown spots, you're left with like one tortilla chip full of guacamole. The quality of experience between a perfectly ripe avocado and one that falls on either side of the ripeness scale is, is so gaping that in order to get that pure experience, you gotta get the timing right. And so when I buy an avocado, I'm no longer in control. Like I have to work my entire schedule around that avocado. Let's say I'm at the store, I buy two green avocados, you know, I'm feeling them, I'm caressing them, I'm asking, is it all right if I take you home, young avocado? And once I take them home, I gotta keep a watchful eye on them. Every day I wake up and run to my fruit bowl to check and see if they're gonna be ready. Like a nesting eagle mother, I often have to scare my roommates away by squawking at them to protect my precious green eggs. A few days passed and I might notice one is almost there, maybe like in 18 hours it'll be ripe enough, and then the other one, maybe it's gonna take a full day, a little bit longer, and I have to start preparing my meals around it. And maybe the first avocado, it's a lovely experience. I cook up some teriyaki salmon, zucchini, rice, top it off with that fresh avocado, a squeeze of lemon, oh my goodness, kill me. But the next day, I'm scheduled to volunteer at like the bingo ranch, or uh, I'm christening my friend's yacht, and all the while in my head, the minutes are ticking down for when my avocado will be over-ripened. If I'm forced to eat an avocado in a less than ideal situation, then what's the point of even having civilization? The shame is unbearable. So this is the battle my generation is gonna have to face. But I thought, instead of just complaining about this, let me try to think up a solution. And what's the solution I fell on, you ask? Now I'll be honest, this was my first idea, and I kind of just fell right into it without considering other possibilities. After a couple of days of research and experimentation, I concluded that shoving an avocado into a vacuum tube does not create a wormhole. It was effective in making guacamole though. Unfortunately, it seems this wormhole ripening solution is only going to be theoretical for now. Not all is lost though, because I'm actually writing a sci-fi story right now. This avocado wormhole is like the perfect sort of sci-fi technology for this story. And I want to use this video to explain the, the scientific theories behind the ideas and to make sure that I can sort of explain it well enough so that it will make sense to the reader in the story. Here's my best attempt at that. Wormholes. What are they? Well, we actually don't know if they're real. They're just kind of theoretical. But the idea is that wormholes can bend space and time as kind of shortcuts to other areas in the universe. So if good old Captain Crunch here represents space and you want to get from this side of space to this side of space, it will take light years to get across this area. The universe is too goddamn big. So instead of having to travel all the way across here, the idea is that wormholes can bend space and time so that the two points meet up. So instead of, again, having to travel all the way around, it's almost instantaneous between these two spots. So wormholes are meant as a form of space travel. Now the theories of where wormholes exist vary, but one of the stronger arguments is that black holes contain wormholes. Black holes are, are tripping. They're so dense that they just absorb all matter and light. They have this event horizon that once something goes in, nothing ever comes out. It's, it's bending space and time, and the theory is that black holes can be so dense that they create little bridges between two distant parts of the universe, basically a wormhole. The black holes you learn about in like science class are usually from like imploding stars. The gravity pushes inward to create a black hole, but not all black holes have to be massive. The most important factor when creating a black hole is its density, so as long as there's enough mass in a small area, it can form a black hole. For example, if the Earth's mass was condensed to the size of a golf ball, it would be dense enough to form a black hole. That's still not big enough for an avocado to fit through, but... I think what's even more interesting is that scientists theorize that there are these high-energy cosmic rays entering our atmosphere, and they have so much momentum and energy that they create tiny little black holes. And these black holes are only like a few atoms big, and they exist for a really short amount of time, but they're still black holes. And right now, scientists are trying to use particle accelerators to try to mimic this behavior and create their own tiny black holes. Create your own tiny black holes. Irish Spring. <laughs> Why did I have an Irish accent there? So I think in terms of sci-fi novels, we're not too far off 
from like creating our own little human-made black holes, but we still run into the issue of sending objects through black holes or making them traversable. I already have a pretty good system to make guacamole, so how do you prevent something from being crushed in a black hole. Apparently, one of the solutions might be negative matter. If you're a physicist stuck inside doing equations and math all day, you might think to yourself, what if I just put a negative sign in front of mass? That's basically how the theoretical idea of negative matter came into existence. The idea is that there could be matter in the universe where instead of gravity forcing objects of mass together, something with negative matter would repel other objects of mass. This sort of idea goes against the laws of physics, so it's kind of like, what are the legitimate chances that this could actually happen? But from my research, people are trying to come up with ways of creating negative mass with things like quantum fluctuations and cooling rubidium. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't really understand how they, you know, how that is creating negative matter or anything past that point but really when it comes down to science fiction you have to kind of make a world where this theoretical idea actually exists and then explain how that changes the world so you could make a sort of shield made out of negative mass to counter the immense pressures of the black hole and allow the avocado to to actually traverse the wormhole but the important question then becomes where does that wormhole actually go? Well, one theory that I'm gonna go with is that you can't really use wormholes to travel through the universe we know and love, but instead you kind of make a, a new universe with something called white holes. White holes are another theorized thing that are supposed to be the exact opposite of black holes. White holes are shooting out matter and light and nothing can ever enter them. When black holes are formed, they collect all this mass and they start bending space and time due to their density and the gravitational force. And then on the other side of this sort of funnel that they create, there may be a white hole that's releasing all of this matter. And you might be asking, well, how come we haven't seen any white holes in our universe? Well, your voice sounds kind of weird is my response. And if white holes do exist, then perhaps our universe is actually the product of a very important white hole we call the Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory, Bazinga, could point to the fact that a white hole created our universe. And while our universe is continuing to expand, another theory suggests that even the universe will eventually stop expanding, gravity will force the universe all back together, and this will again form another black hole, and thus on the other side of the black hole that has everything in the universe is another white hole that is basically pushing out the universe, almost like resetting or creating the universe once again. So, how am I any closer to getting a perfectly ripe avocado? Well, the last important piece of information is that time is relative. So if you could send a avocado through a black hole and out of a white hole unharmed, that time that the avocado spent in that alternate universe would be different relative to our universe. Essentially, you would create an avocado universe so that you could have time for it to ripen and then send it back so that we can enjoy it right away. I have here a quick excerpt of how the technology is explained in the story. Scientific theories and fictional interpretations are kind of mixed up in here together, so don't get your undies in a bunch if, you know, some of it doesn't really make sense. I just want to try to write it out so that hopefully it makes sense to the reader. Here's the product description for the Relativity Universe Box. The Relativity Universe Box, RUB, or RUB for short, is a household device that uses Angel Corp's wormhole harnessing technology, copyright, to ensure the peak ripeness of fruits, vegetables, cheeses, wines, and more. See warranty for a list of suitable applications. Only current application tested avocados. Instructions. Simply place an object such as an avocado into the RUB device and have perfectly ripened fruit in an instant. After taking a small sample of the avocado, rub works by accelerating particles at high speed to form a black hole. But don't worry, as the black hole is very small and easily contained in our durable and stunningly designed chromium enforced box. This device is a great showpiece on any kitchen counter. Simultaneously, a thin layer of rubidium is formed over the avocado and cooled to nearly absolute zero, giving the element the qualities of negative mass. Ordinarily, gravity forces two objects of conventional mass together, but an object with negative mass repels other objects of mass. This layer of negative mass 
mass acts in two ways. First, it expands the circumference of the black hole to allow the avocado to travel within it. And second, it acts as a protective shield for the avocado to travel safely into the black hole without getting crushed by the immense force or falling infinitely due to the black hole's bending of space and time. Objects larger than the recommended size void the warranty and may lead to compromised black holes that could permanently damage the device. Once shielded, the avocado enters the black hole and exits out the other end, also known as a white hole. Our universe is in fact the product of a white hole which we called the Big Bang. This event sent all matter out into nothingness, creating the universe we know today. Eventually, all the matter in our expanding universe will be forced together by gravity to form a black hole, and thus a white hole on the other side, creating a universe once again. Using black holes and white holes to create universes is great for ripening avocados. The avocado is dematerialized as it exits the white hole, creating an entire universe with the avocado's mass. But right before it does so, it forms the exact same avocado you placed into the device before. Using a sample of the avocado taken before it entered the black hole, the rub device determines how much time relative to the avocado it should oxygenate before re-entering the black hole. By sending the avocado through a black hole and creating an entire universe, the rub device is able to have time pass faster for the avocado relative to the customer who needs only wait an instant. Developer side note, the fact that this device creates a universe that compresses back together to form an avocado has caused some employees to look into the possibility that our universe serves a similar function. Some unrespected mathematicians performed calculations that suggest our universe may come together to form a honey glazed ham. Scientists have used this information to theorize how we might create a larger black hole for interstellar travel. Philosophers have tried to use this to apply meaning to human existence but it is the development's team recommendation that we begin funding research on how we might be able to create a black hole oven that cooks the perfect roast. Please only use device for intended objects, warranty void if any other objects used within the device. So there you have it. There's probably some flaws with how I used the theories or um, physics, but I think it's a fun concept. Definitely some Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy influence with it. I just think it's fun to think of a future where people use like black hole microwaves to create universes just to ensure that their produce is at peak ripeness. I linked some of the sources that I used down below if you want to check them out. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.